let's take a look, see this wood. Uh, I'll tell you what this wood is, where it's going, and, and all that stuff. Here. Let's grab our moisture meter, turn it on. You take the cap and put these prongs on the calibration. Guys, there we go. 18.2. All right, so. Now all of this from here all the way down has been in here for a couple weeks now. These last two rows, the top two, I just milled yesterday. Let's see where these are at. Give us a good. That is 25% moisture. That's crazy. That's super duper high. Our goal is anything under 19. Like you don't want it close to 19. Anything like under 14 would be ideal. Let's check out one down here from our earlier milling. Heck yeah, 9.9, 9.8 it's saying. That's awesome. That's 9.8, next course down, 10.0, 9.9 it's saying now. All right, let's go up a little bit more. That says 12.3, that's good. All right, so all of this wood here is what I need for the office that's next to the house site. Um, the office is going to hold all of our solar equipment. It's where the root cellar is going to be below. So we have a big hole up there and we need to pour footers and make a block wall before we could put the floor joists and these walls and these are all the rafters and the collar ties and all that stuff. Um, before we could get going on that. So I want to get going on that immediately because Meg just got a new remote job and she's working out of the camper right now and it's kind of like you're tiptoeing around a lot so um, anyway it's just an adjustment with our our living style and we're going to have to make sure Meg is comfortable and she could focus and, uh, and and do what she does but anyway congrats to Meg on that um, don't worry you'll still see plenty of Meg on the on the videos it's just that's what she's doing during the day so I'm up here I'm gonna be milling um, like I said this is all the framing stuff and I have an empty section let me show you all right we have this whole other section here that is empty and I'm just gonna stack it um, so I'm making some basically some one by fours for the sheathing on the exterior of this structure and then I'll figure out as far as siding and like the roofing and, and, the, and the floor, all that stuff. So I, I definitely want to do the sheathing um, and get that all done. So we have this whole area to stack it and then we'll probably empty this and go start building the structure and then stack all the flooring and the uh, decking for the roof and all that stuff over there. But uh, I'm looking around for uh, a snake, which has found his way in here. Here's a picture of him. Uh, my youngest daughter, Autumn, named him Gerald. Uh, but anyway, I was grabbing that ladder the other day, and he was like right next to it, and he kind of like spooked me for a second. But And then I noticed he's in here because like a couple mice have found their way in. Like I've seen a few nests being built between the boards here, so this, this snake is more than welcome to stay. And I try to keep my distance so I don't spook him, but he's like a five-foot-long rat snake. Um, and I really... I wish I could let him know he's in no danger here. He's more than welcome, and maybe he could bring in his friends too. So anyway, if I see Gerald, I'll, uh, I'll get a video and show it to you, but yeah. So let's get on the mill and let's cut some 1x4s. Now, I'm going to be cutting these 1x4s. Um, I'm going to be cutting them at like 4.5 inches, and then when they dry and shrink, they are going to be put on the mill again and just shaved down to the to the exact um, width that I need them to be. I did that experiment back here with the radial and tangential shrinkage and all that, and depending on where you cut your board, where it lies within the log, you get different results. I mean, it's like an eighth inch to like three sixteenths of an inch of difference. Um, it gets you most of the way there, but it's not a perfect method. So. I'm just going to cut them a little oversized, let them shrink, and then I'll throw them back on the mill and, and shave them off, and then they'll be nice, um, consistent boards after they're all dried. So, let's just cut them a little extra for now. Let's go. There's nothing like a clean workspace, well, the immediate workspace, to 
come out to early in the morning. So I cleaned up yesterday. I got the pressure washer out here. I sprayed off everything. There's no gunk anywhere. Feeling good. Whoa! Whoa! Hey, buddy. What's your name? You're the guy from yesterday. Here's my friend. He's kind of terrified right now. Let's That's my little friend, little turtle. He's been hanging out with me yesterday. All right, let's put him back. I don't want to hurt him. You're kind of in the way of traffic over here, bud. You'll be safe right here, though. There. Okay? There you go. Hmm. Got an idea. Let's make this guy a little pond. It's supposed to get really hot today. Right about here. Oh. That's that's typical. Don't worry. I'm thinking uh, we need a beach area, a little decline. There we go. Yeah, this was just sitting around. I don't know why. Oh yeah. I see these turtles in the woods all the time. I don't think they're like lake turtles. But I did catch this guy in a puddle the other day. How's that? That'll keep him cool if he gets too hot. What do you think? You want a little tunnel? Got this tire. You could climb up there if you want. Okay. Every pond needs a rock. Let's go find a rock. Okay. It's a little big. Well, it'll stop it from blowing around anyway, right? All right, there you go, buddy. What do you think? You want to fill it with some dirt? Make it more authentic? Feels pretty good. You want to get in there? Here, bud. Oh yeah. Now, I know you're cold-blooded and stuff, but all right, we'll keep a little eye on this guy. Hopefully, I don't step on him, but he's out of the way. Our little mascot for this episode. All right. Hopefully, you enjoy that. Um, I'm not sure if you're thanking me or hating me, but you're welcome. In case it's a thank you, and uh, yeah, we'll check in in a little bit, buddy. I don't know what you eat. I mean, if I find like a bug or something, I'll bring it over. Or a grub? You want a grub? You probably eat a grub. I'll find a grub. Don't worry. I'll put it right here for you. All right, with that project complete, let's get milling. painted turtle? How about that? I don't think he's a painted turtle. Maybe he is. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's use our legs. Alright, now you don't normally put your flat cut on the outside away from your fence when the round side, like, you don't do that, um, but this, this isn't even flat. It's mostly flat and then it turns into a chainsaw um, massacre on that end, so. Alright. 
right, that's pretty stinking close to this being perpendicular with this. All right, let's, let's set it down. Grab on there real quick. I really need to grow a third arm. I've been thinking about it. Okay, this is close enough to get a cut and start squaring this thing off. takes it. Poor guy, he's holding his breath. He turned around and got deeper in the puddle, so I think he's liking it. All right, more updates to follow. Worm, Picasso. We'll check in in a bit.
I really got to do this. I, I got to be more productive with this mill. So see how my log is down here and then I just rotated this log off and put it on this side. I got to get some more backstops down here. I'll show you in a minute. I might be able to salvage something out of this. Get one slice out of it anyway, maybe. Let me see. No. Oh, man, it couldn't be in the worst spot. That's just garbage. Sorry, buddy. Ah. That's unfortunate. All right, guys, see my backstops here? I have them. I have three of them on the board. I need more. It'd be awesome if I could just do one on every single like cross section on the mill. That's the ultimate goal. But what I could do is do the main cutting down here. And then when it's in a slab form like this, so this has the proper thickness, but you're gonna have to like, you know, cut it this way, cut it this way to give yourself your boards. So what I want to do is cut it from the log and then slide it down on the rail system here and have a set of backstops down here so then I could get them ready and then just continue, like just slide them off. That way it's less handling of the wood. It's like you slide it off out of the way, then you stand them up and just cut them right here. I don't have to slide them all the way back down to do the next step. Does that make sense? I'm usually cutting like nine foot boards. Like I said, I'm usually cutting like nine foot boards and um, I could get this log a little bit that way and then those logs down there and then I could use the entire rail system. It's like prep and then final. Change of plans. I got, so I'm gonna cut it at four and a half, right? Here, and look, you got the pith right there. I don't want that, so change of plans. I'm just gonna keep cutting slabs. When I get to the pith, I'll just get around it and then keep cutting. Um, maybe once I get past the pith, I could get it to four and a half. Yeah. And then just cut all these the other direction. Don't tell me I'm out of level. Oh, bloody hell. punches here guys. Not a level. Blade is a little out so I gotta bring it up a little bit. Damn it. Okay, a little setback. Let's level it up. This is saw milling. Right there. You gotta watch those things. Yeah, screw you up. The problem compounds itself very easily. So, you really gotta pay attention to when it's at a level. Okay, back in business, let's cut.
it did cut the pith, but I did that on purpose. I don't really, well, let's see if I do have a board on this side. So you don't want that, guys. I do, I, c I could get one, one board out of that before I get to the pith. And then this side, I have more than that. I mean, I almost have two boards worth. So I'll get a board here and one board out of here. And then, I don't know, that could be something else. But anyway, so now what I'm gonna do, I have five inches here. So I'm just gonna sacrifice that half inch. I want my final dimension here to be four and a half. So now I'm gonna take this piece, stand it upright and cut my slices one at a time. And um, then I'll just do a final pass on everything to get it down to four and a half inches. So let's get this piece up right. What? Oh no. Where's my friend? Oh. Where'd he go? He didn't even take my worm. Where'd he go? I'm not going to harass him, but like, where'd he go? See under the tire? What else could he do? Nope. Go. I mean, he booked it. I just looked at him like two minutes ago. Oh, there he is. I think he's, um, caught ya. I see you. There you are. Where are you going, dude? Just going to get some sun? Trying to warm up? He's looking at me like, dude, leave me alone. All right, I will. I will. You're welcome to come back. I'll keep your pond. Okay, I'll leave it here for like two days. That's it, though. If you don't use it, you're done. See what I mean? I could just stand these up over there as I'm cutting them. Get them ready for the next step instead of doing this. Ooh! 
Ooh, I forgot. I bought I bought something new. Yeah, I'm gonna go try it. Let's uh let's go get it. I bought one of these, they're way too long, but just one of these clamps. So normally when you have a bunch of wood side by side like this and you gotta, sh you know, you're cutting the width of it. I usually grab a board, like this scrap piece of cedar here, and then I'll clamp everything down. So it's out of the way of the blade. And all this does is it pushes everything up against the backstops, right? And the problem with that is that sometimes the pressure is only in one spot. And you go tighter and tighter, and as you're doing that, these down here, are they're kind of loose and they're free to wiggle around. Um, so, I could either cut this one, but the idea I had was to get this under here. It's a super quick, keep it together clamp. And then this is all one. Now I obviously can't use this one because if I bring the mill forward, it's gonna run into right here. So I gotta, I forgot the size of the mill. So I got this 36 inch, I could just cut it, but this would be a cool implement to have like in the mill at all times. And I think I might do that. I gotta figure out a way to do it. But anyway. Ah. shave off the top and then flip all oh, pain. Chill.
we'll go stack these. Give you a little bath too, huh? Little, little scrubber rooney. There you go. Clean you up, you know? We don't want any parasites. There. Okay. How do you feel? You're not talking to me? Alright. Whatever, dude. Hey, Autumn. You in your jammies? Good morning. Look what I did. Go check them out. I made them a little pond. Go check it out. What do you think? You think he likes it? Mm -hmm. Hey, can I touch them? Uh, you can, sure. Watch out! I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. I know. <laughs>